So now we are ready to start the entire wing element that is sitting underneath the stadium and the seating. Now you'll notice up to now that most of the tools and the processes that we're using are actually quite basic 3D tools. There isn't really anything ultra complex about the workflow or about anything I'm doing. So I'm sorry if some of it might seem a little bit boring, but in reality that is exactly what it is. We're using basically two types of uh, methods to create almost every single object and everything really starts from an editable poly and then it is either geometric or it is organic and that is really just about it as far as the architecture goes. So anyway let's jump right into getting this form modeled up. So we're going to start by looking at the elevation and we know that it needs to form a shell around this stadium seating which is why we modeled that in the first place. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by taking that form. We don't really need this plan anymore since we have this modeled up. And we're going to isolate that. We can also use the same layer. It doesn't really matter if we do or don't uh, since it is in the same area. So we're going to start by actually using some of the similar geometry that we've had on the stadium. In particular, I'm going to start with that shell. And I'm going to move that slightly down and just create a separate object by shift and dragging down. Since this object is facing outwards, I'm going to highlight all of the faces and just flip them. And then I'm going to start to manipulate them to start forming the base of this shell that we're building. Now again, this is going to take a lot of clicking here backwards and forwards until it actually looks like what you want it to, but eventually we'll get there. I'm going to work a lot in between the front view and the perspective view. And I've just kept that edge selected here and I've shift dragged it out till about there. What I want to do is get the main volume modeled up. And once I have that ready, I can then go and tweak it and test out what it looks like with the norms smoothing on. Again here I can select the edge, do, do it like so, right, so now let's see what this looks like, we know we want to raise this slightly and pull this out, so in perspective view we're starting to get some idea of a shell happening underneath this building. So what we need to do now is we need to move up some of these edges, selecting these edges here we can connect that. Now I'm changing over to vertex mode by holding down control and then I'm going to select here edge constraint and that's going to allow me to slide this across. I know right now it's actually along the y-axis but later on it's going to help me to not deform my shape but just slide the vertices across. Let's deselect this and remove it just so that we can keep a, a pure poly model and here again I'm going to control and then click on vertices. I still have the edge constraint on which means that I can't move that poly, I mean that, that vertex outside of the, the polygon that it's on or outside of the line that it's following and I'm going to connect these two. So this is very similar to the techniques that you'll learn from car modeling. 
it's pretty much the same thing. It's like shaping the bonnet of a car. It's more or less the same workflow. Now what we quickly need to start doing is adapting our shape to form the plan view that we have here. So we're going to connect that up and then right click and target weld that to that. And that's going to basically be more or less where our corner is going to be. And then these guys here are going to start shifting back. And we can do that in plan, plan view. We've got to make sure that this is just slightly outside of the seating area since it forms the outside shell. I'm going to shift and drag this up to create that edge and I want this poly to disappear and rather to bridge this edge with this edge using the bridge just so I have a clean poly and not a triangle like I had before. So now everything is back to a nice poly and the polys are going to help us really with the gnomes toggle. So as soon as we apply the gnomes toggle you'll see that everything is very very smooth which if is what you're going for then great but we want to have slightly sharper edges now to get those sharper edges we need to chamfer the the edges that we want to sharpen so let's go out of gnomes toggle and we can then start testing by selecting this edge here now if you like part of a good workflow would actually be to take this object which I would almost call the raw base object and you could go and save selected that object and you could have a backup folder on your working working set of folders where you would put intermediate backups of objects just in case you go past a, a point and you don't really want to in case you basically collapse your stack and you lose that history, you want to have certain key objects which are perhaps more complex to work on. You want to have them backed up somewhere just in case you have a client change and you need to go back in time. Uh, perhaps you want to save the entire file and then every few hours just do a resave. But it's up to you how you do that. As long as you remember that somewhere along the line, we want to always work with something that's editable back in history so we can go back and we can make changes. That's really the important part here. Anyway, I'm going to go just motor on forward and select this entire edge. And I'm going to add a very small chamfer to that. Uh, perhaps, oh, here we, here's a bit of trial and error, but perhaps five centimeters. And then we can just gnomes toggle that and see if that's too big or too small. Maybe we can go a bit tighter. So let's chamfer that again, this time with a much smaller amount. And also we can add more iterations to our form. Generally three is a nice number to work with that doesn't doesn't end up being too too intensive. So also I'd like to get a little bit more edge refinement to this line here. So I will do the same thing where I select the edges and I can just click on a loop. And I can just do the same sized chamfer there and again gnomes toggle and you'll see what we're getting is we're getting this sort of shaped wing form here we have our building already this is the little passage that will be connecting up to our building so we're not really worried about that sticking out since the building actually sits underneath here and supports all of that now at this point would be a good time to exit out and see how all of this is looking and you could go and copy this across so just before we finish this video let's have a look at how it looks like when it's all instanced across
now we have those four shapes. Remember that when we do the gnomes toggle, it is much better if the entire object, in other words, the four quarters are all merged or attached together into one shape. Just because right now it's not really smoothing these corners, but it is fine for now while we're in the working process. We can attach it all together and then re reapply the gnomes toggle towards the end. So you'll see now what we have, if we zoom out, we're starting to get this clean wing shape. And we can go back if we select that and we can have a look by looking at the front view. We can see how that's looking according to our front elevation. And we can see that it's pretty, pretty close and we're kind of getting there. So let's leave it at that. Right, in the next video, we're going to be uh, working on a little bit more detail around these edges here before we carry on to the rest of the building.